Hi everybody, this is uh, Mr. Jim here and Dr. Luke Scottson. We're going to be running through the method today for completion fractal and this fault biology class is going to complete, complete, sorry. It's about enzyme activity and how pH of uh, hydrogen peroxide in this case affects the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. In this reaction, hydrogen peroxide is being broken down and oxygen is one of the byproducts. You need to actually go and work way and research that reaction, how hydrogen peroxide is broken down or decomposed by the cat catalase. In this case, the source of the catalase is going to be uh, the liver, the enzymes in the liver. So go away and do research that reaction because it's the volume of gas produced in a minute that you're going to use to equate to a rate of reaction here. So that's uh, some important background information for you to research. It is a completion practical, so you're going to be given the method you will need to adapt that method slightly, including a discussion about how you increase sample size. So you're responsible for bringing all of your own data into the equation. Uh, you, there is a practical task sheet that you should download from BAMAC. Use that to prepare for this practical in conjunction with this video. Go away and, and develop your hypothesis. Identify the variables. Come to the class on Thursday morning, ready to go. Uh, we'll have a brief discussion before we start the practical on Thursday. Going to stop the video now and then we'll show the first step. All right. Hi guys. Um, so just going to run through the method with you uh, about how to do this practical. Very first thing, as always, safety gear. Got my gloves, got my glasses, and I've got my lab coat, of course, apron in your case. Uh, right, so very first part of this prac is you have to prepare your samples of liver. So we've got a nice, nice little cut of liver here. We've actually got quite a bit of it there. Um, this is full of all sorts of juicy enzymes and nice other uh, goodies that we want to use in this practical. So the very first thing is we have to cut it. So I've got it on the tile and we have to get, uh, <laughs> we have to get uh, one centimetre cubed pieces uh, for your experiment. So what I've got here is just got a razor blade, just trying to carefully get it out of the cardboard. There we go. So just a safety blade. And again, we want to try and get as close as possible to one centimetre cubed pieces. If we have any variation from that, of course, we'll have a different amount of enzyme, and so that's going to change. Um, it's going to introduce a small error into the experiment. So I'll just rotate this around here. It's nice and fresh because we've got nice red blood coming out of that. So what I'll do, I'll just create a nice flat surface to get our first cut. So it's quite soft, so it should be pretty easy to cut with a razor blade. And ideally what we'd have here is we'd have like a ruler to measure a centimetre. Now here I'm just going to do a little bit rough. Um, just for the sake of getting the, the video done in a reasonable amount of time. So I'm sort of just cutting through. And again, because it's soft, that might make a bit of a challenge to get exact pieces. Okay. This is where the forceps will be handy if you have a partner in this experiment for them to hold it steady. So I've got my cube there. All right, so now that we've got our, our samples liver prepared, of course we need one for uh, each of the pHs you're testing, and each pH will be doing uh, in triplicate, okay? So, so you're gonna need, what would that be, 18 pieces of liver, one centimeter cube. So the second part of the prac is now to get our hydrogen peroxide ready. So in this instance, I've just got hydrogen peroxide that uh, you'd get as, as purchased. So the pH hasn't been adjusted, uh, but you'll be provided with um, samples of hydrogen peroxide that have to have their pH adjusted and be labelled. Okay, so what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to measure that out. So I could, of course, always just pour this directly into the 10 mil measuring cylinder, but given um, how small the measuring cylinder is, it's quite easy to spill it everywhere. We don't want to do that. So what I will do, I'll just pour some into a beaker first. Just carefully pour it in. And then I'll just use that to transfer, so just to make it a bit easier. And of course, anytime you're measuring anything out into a measuring cylinder, you have to be uh, trying to get your eyes level. And you want to look at the bottom of the meniscus being level there. So here we're measuring out nine mils. And that's going to go into our 100 mil measuring cylinder, which is where we're going to be what we're going to be using to measure the volume of gas produced in this reaction. So, 
one mid thing, almost forgot. Following this procedure, what we're going to do is we're going to add some detergent into the cylinder first. So the reason we're adding detergent is when this reaction occurs, breaking down the hydrogen peroxide and producing the gas, uh, we want to be able to trap that gas because if the gas is just bubbling out and disappearing, we're not going to know how much gas is being produced. So what we'll do is we'll add two drops of uh, our detergent in. So we don't want to add too much. Two drops should be sufficient. Enough. And now we'll add our, our nine mils of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so now that we've got our hydrogen peroxide and we've also got our detergent in there, just swirl it around. You want to try and dissolve that detergent as much as you can into the hydrogen peroxide solution. Okay, so now that we've done that, uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to add our cube of liver into there and as soon as we do that We're going to start the timer. Okay now Important thing to remember here is that you want to know what the initial volume is and then you want to look at the final volume So you can actually determine what volume of gas is being produced from the um, What final volume of bubbles you get so it's important to look at the volume after you add the cube um, the reason for that is because uh, the cube of liver is going to displace some of that liquid, so it's going to change the level of the liquid uh, that you'll have in the cylinder. Now, because the cube, again, ideally, if it's one centimetre cubed, that would be uh, one mil of volume displaced, so you should go up to you know, just over uh, 10 mils. But, of course, it's not going to be exact, so just to try and take that into account um, in terms of the volume, we'll look at that immediately afterwards. So I'll just move this out of the way. And you can see... We're at there. So again, this is where having a partner ready to go, one person to add in, one person to look at the level. And then also you want to start the timer pretty much as soon as you've, as you've added the cube. So I've got my forceps. Got the cube there. Got it ready. And then this is where you would add it in and start recording and look at the height. So boom. And you already see you're getting a reaction starting. So yeah, you can see the gas has actually been produced relatively quickly. Hydrogen peroxide is one of those interesting mo molecules. They're actually quite uh, unstable. And so if you leave hydrogen peroxide just sitting there by itself at room temperature, it will actually gradually break down by itself. But the catalase that's, or the enzymes, in this particular case, catalase and peroxidase, which you have in the liver, um, is actually accelerating that reaction. So you're getting gas produced much quicker. Now the reason we actually have that in your liver in the first place, they're not just animal livers, but our own liver, is because we have hydrogen peroxide generated as part of some of our biological processes. Sometimes it's used um, as a bio, as a signaling molecule and to basically get your immune system going. Other times it's a byproduct um, of various biochemical reactions happening in your body. But it breaks down into free radicals, which then combine to form oxygen gas. When you hear about free radicals and damage to um, DNA and other parts of your body, um, <coughs> this is one of the, the key molecules that causes that. So we have catalase in our body basically as a way to try and break down that, that hydrogen peroxide uh, and prevent it from actually being able to react with other bits and pieces, other molecules and, and various things in our bodies. What are we up to now, Dr. Johnson, in terms uh, of time? Right, so this is a minute 36, uh, so we're approaching, approaching the end of our two minutes. Um, of course, if we let it go, eventually it's gonna keep going after two minutes, but the purpose of this practical course is to look at the rate of the reaction. So. The total amount of gas produced after an hour isn't so much important. We just want to see how much gas is produced within a fixed time frame. So we're almost at the end of two minutes. So you get ready to look at the level and then you would record it. So two minutes was just now. So that's when it was at, I would say about 77 uh, mils total. And then of course we subtract that initial volume that we had to get the, the volume of gas produced. But you can see of course it's still going. Um, and that will continue to go, but really we're just interested in how much gas is produced in that fixed time. Alright, so that was the uh, procedure from doing uh, one of these experiments. Of course, because there's a number of error, uh, possible sources of error, as there are in any sort of experiment, um, you want to replicate this. Okay? So you'll be repeating uh, for this particular pH another two times, so you have a total of, of three replicates, uh, it's called a triplicate, and then you'll be getting an average of, of those values, and then from that you'll be able to get something that you're reasonably confident is pretty close to the actual uh, rate of reaction. And then 
Likewise, with the other pHs you test, you'll be looking at the triplicates of those, so you get an average, and then you'll be able to establish what sort of trends you have, um, basically the effect of pH on the uh, catalase activity. Yeah, thank you for watching. <laughs>